Mamas, welcome. Welcome to day five of our five day Thrive in Five challenge. We have gone through so much change in the past five days. Even if you've only, and I say this like with air quotes, right? Even if you have only actually done one or two things and you've only, again, air quotes, made a few changes along the way, wow, that is huge. Because little changes in your health add up to so much. They affect a much greater result, a much greater overall change. And so I applaud you and it's like, yay, we've made it. So what now? What today? Today, I want to talk about what we went over each day, like the main parts of it, because I feel like a review is in order because we've gone over so much and I want to kind of highlight the main parts. So, and then I will also highlight the challenges that I gave you every day. And I also want to say this before I start, I went live in our Facebook group yesterday And I just wanted you to know that it is never too late to start. And you are not behind if you have not started yet. If you have not tuned in live or watched one replay of one of these videos, you are not behind. Your intention is still there. Your intention is to be a healthier version of yourself. That's my guess because you signed it for this challenge. Your intention is there, and that's the first step. And then you got busy. Life got in the way. I get that. I sign up for things, and I'm like, shoot, I really want to be there. I want to show up live, but for whatever reason, I can't. Okay, I'm going to watch the replay. And then sometimes that doesn't happen. And then sometimes it, I allow it to get me down. Like, oh, I just didn't do any of it. What the heck? And then I don't do any of it. I continue not doing any of it, but I don't want that to happen for you. I want you to know that, again, air quotes, even if you only tune in to one replay, you can get so much from it. So I really encourage you to do that. Now, let's go over what we went over this week. Now, I'm looking (laughs) at my Zoom camera, and I'm thinking that I might have some salad dressing on my face. (laughs) Yeah. So this morning behind the scenes, I did a photo shoot at home and I had Erica Makovich from AKA the maternal sidekick. She is a doula that AKA, or I should say, (laughs) she's called, um, the maternal, sorry. I'm like, what am I hearing? She's called the maternal sidekick because she's a doula. So I should say, hence the name, not AKA, hence the name. Yes. But she's also a photographer and a really good one too. I love seeing her pictures on Instagram. So at Instagram, she is on on Instagram. She is at the maternal sidekick dot photo. That will take you to her photography account. And then you can see all her awesome pictures. So hang on. I'm just getting comfy in my chair here. Let's get comfy together. We've been together for five days. Why not? So, okay. I had Erica over and we did a photo shoot because the last branding photo shoot or photo shoot of any kind that I've done that I did was back when I was nine months pregnant with Ben. So I thought, let's get him involved in this photo shoot. And the girls were there as well. And I just was doing my thing in the kitchen. I made a smoothie. I made a salad. They were, they became props and it was a lot of fun. So why do I have salad dressing on my lips? Because I was just hungrily eating the rest of the salad prop before I jumped on this call. So I think I've got it all. And if I don't, now you know what it is. It's salad dressing. All right. That aside, let's go over what we have gone over this week. Right back to day one on Monday. Day one was all about figuring out the foods and figuring out how to manage your mindset. Because managing your mindset is everything when it comes to eating healthy and staying on that healthy eating plan. You have to have the right kind of mindset 
in order to start a healthy eating plan, in order to implement new lifestyle changes for the better, and to stick with that plan and to stick with those new changes. So we went all over that. Now, if you want more in depth, watch that replay video. It's in our Facebook group. It is also in your email because I emailed it to you and I created a podcast episode out of it. So just go to the Love and Lettuce podcast on Apple Podcasts or Spotify and you will find, it'll actually say Thrive in Five Challenge, day one, day two, and so on. So you can find out the ones that you want to pop in your earbuds and listen to. So day one, all about how to get the right mindset. So the first thing I talked about that I really want to emphasize is how important it is to have a morning meeting with yourself every single day. So every morning you are waking up and you are saying to yourself, how do I want to feel today? How am I feeling now? What is the difference between here and there? So I'm feeling kind of blah, but I want to feel really good today. Okay, so what do I have to do? What do you have to do, self, to get there? And you're actually consciously going over in your head the things that you have to do to get there. And then you are doing those things throughout the day. So you're keeping that promise to yourself. You're kind of like, your morning meeting is essentially making a promise to yourself. I'm going to do these things today and I know that the result will be that I feel better. And then I feel the way that I'm choosing that I want to feel. I want to feel great. These are the things that I'm going to do to get there. And then keep those promises to yourself. When you keep the promise to yourself, that in itself will cause you to feel so much better already because you kept the promise to yourself. You didn't just have this empty thing that you said, this empty promise. Once again, I'm going to go for a walk today and it didn't happen. If you say that I want to go for a walk today, go for that walk today. So you have to remember in the morning not to say things that are, that you might not be able to get to because that's life. And that's okay if that happens. It's not like, oh, I didn't keep the promise to myself. Oh, okay. There is life involved here, but I do want you to be realistic in the morning when you say, can I actually realistically go for this walk today? Yes. Okay. So that's going to be on one on my list of the things that I'm going to do today. When you keep these promises to yourself, not only do you feel amazing because of the result of those things that you're doing, going for the walk, drinking more water, having some me time, you feel great as a result of those things, a direct result, but you also feel great because you decided to do, to do these things. You promised yourself this is who you're going to be today. These were the things that you were going to carry out, and you did. There is nothing more powerful than that because that just instills, and this, that just evokes so much confidence in yourself. You wrote it down, or you thought about it, and you did it. Now you can trust yourself more. Now I'm getting into this healthy eating business, you know, healthy eating plan. I'm going to stick to it. Because you've proven time and again, every day that you do, that you make these choices and then you do them, you carry them out, you stick with them. So in this morning meeting, I also like to think about how do I want to feel tonight when my head hits the pillow? Hmm. I want to feel accomplished. I want to feel proud of myself because I stuck to those things that I said that I was going to do. And I ate really freaking well. And I feel so good because of that. So I want you to feel, when your head hits the pillow tonight, physiologically good. So you're not feeling stuffed, but you're feeling satisfied. You're feeling energized. Even though you're tired, it is bedtime. But you're feeling like in your mind, you're not just completely and totally spent. You know, you're not feeling so burnt out. I don't want that feeling for you. As much as we can avoid it, let's avoid it. And I want you to feel when your head hits a pillow, proud of the choices that you made and proud and accomplished because of the fact that you listened to yourself and you carried through, you carried out those things that you said that you were going to do. It's really important to do that. It's like having a coffee date with a friend 
and then constantly canceling on her. She's going to understand the first few times because she's also a busy mom, very likely. She's got a life. She gets it. But if you constantly do that, or if you simply don't even call her and you just don't show up, how does she feel? She feels let down. She might feel neglected. She might feel resentful. Imagine now that you're doing that to yourself because that is literally what you're doing when you make this plan for yourself and you continuously don't do the plan. You feel, oh, I let myself down. And that's almost worse than letting other people down, right? You're letting yourself down. But let's flip that around. Let's say, yeah, once in a while, you have to cancel on your friend and it's legitimate. You're like, I am so tired. I can't today. Or I literally can't. My schedule won't allow it. I thought I could, but something came up. I'm so sorry. Let's make a new date tomorrow or next week. She'll understand. You'll go. You will carry that out, that next date out. You'll actually go, show up, enjoy yourself. So she'll feel still confident that once in a while she might cancel, but she's going to show up. You know, she's going to show up for the most part. So let's do that for yourself. Once in a while, you might not do those things that you said because X, Y, Z, maybe something really did come up because that is life and that's real. But most of the time, you follow through on the things that you tell yourself that you will do in the day. This is such a huge piece of healthy eating because this is like how you treat yourself and how you treat yourself has everything to do with how well you will feed your body or how crappily you will feed your body. It all ties together. When you have this morning meeting with yourself, I want you to truly think about how I want to feel today. How do I want to feel today? How am I going to get there? What are the things I'm going to do to get there? How do I want to feel when my head hits the pillow tonight? And then at night, I want you to say, like when you're literally, your head is hitting the pillow, how did today go? How did I feel? How am I feeling now? So you're taking this mental record almost of the day. You're kind of going through the day, tallying it up and seeing, how did I feel? And why do I feel this way? Why am I feeling extra stressed? Oh yeah, I didn't get to all those things that I had planned. Maybe I have to plan for less tomorrow because maybe it's a little bit unrealistic when you're saying all these things you want to get done. Maybe you should just stick to a few things that you know you can do that will make you feel that way that you want to feel. Those things that will make you feel empowered and amazing. So I want you to do that. That is a huge part of your mindset is having that morning meeting, deciding how you're feeling when your head hits the pillow, like really trying to think about how you're feeling and and feeling it, and then living your life according to that. It sounds deep and it is, and it's also not, but it's true. The point is, is that it's true. When you feel better and when you're consciously making yourself feel better and feel great and keep yourself, keeping yourself in that place, because that's where you should be, because that's how you feel best. Game changer. Your life will change in so many ways, including how you feed your body. You'll be more inclined to feed your body well and want to keep feeding your body well. And you will feel so good because of that. Because you're feeding your body well, now you're getting all the benefits of that nourishing food. It's huge, right? It's not just about the food. Healthy eating is not just about the food. It's about how you live your life. It's about how you treat your body. It's about your mind, how you treat your mind and what you do with your mind. Now, also in week one, we talked about our future self. One of the things that helps me stay in this healthy zone is to think about my future self. I'm thinking about me five years from now, one year from now, next week. I'm literally thinking of myself next week. And I'm saying, how do I want to, again, how do I want to feel? How do I want to feel? Because that's what we do, right? All we do in life, the things we do in life, are because we want to feel a certain way or we want to avoid feeling a certain way. So we feel crap. We want to not feel crap. Now we do these things to hopefully feel better. 
or we want to feel amazing. So I'm going to go do these things that I know will make me feel amazing. We're always after a feeling. That is why we are doing what we're doing. So this person next week, my future self, Laura, let's next Monday. How do I want her to feel? Well, I want her to feel energized. I don't want her to be dragging her butt because she didn't get enough sleep and she was up late and she was snacking on the couch again and she was giving into her cravings and oh yeah, she had a lot of cravings and she just wasn't. She just didn't listen to the things that she knew she should be doing for her her own health and her well-being. And ugh, that doesn't feel good. I don't want to feel that way on Monday. No, on Monday, I want to know that I chose health so many times that I had the opportunity to eat that salad today instead of eating a sandwich. I had the opportunity to have a smoothie today instead of not, because sometimes it's the fact that we're simply not eating enough. We're not eating. So I had a smoothie instead of skipping breakfast, for example. I want to feel on Monday so proud of those choices and energized because of them, because the food is nourishing my body and choosing the food, the decision to eat those healthy foods makes me feel proud and accomplished and satisfied. So it's multiple level. Physiologically, how the food's actually making me feel and psychologically, mentally, emotionally, how my choices are making me feel about those choices, about the fact that I made those choices. They're making me feel so freaking proud. That's how I want to feel on Monday and every single day. Thank you very much. So I want you to live for that future self. Live in the moment. But think about the decisions you make today will affect her. And either way, it's going to be Monday. Either way, it's going to be four weeks from now. You will be you in four weeks. How do you want to feel in four weeks? What choices do you want to have made in those four weeks? Knowing what you now know about certain foods and how they react in the body. You can either give in to the chips tonight when you're watching Netflix and stay stuck. Or you can say, I'm going to watch Netflix on the couch and I'm going to enjoy myself without food. If you're hungry, you can snack, have a healthier snack, have some salty pumpkin seeds. You've got the recipe in your email from day one, from day two. If you're hungry, have a better snack like almond butter from the jar. Put it in a bowl and add some coconut oil. Dip an apple into it if you want to. Dip a banana into it if you want to. Or just have it straight from the spoon. But if you're not hungry at night, don't snack. You should be snacking if you're hungry. And then you should say, why am I hungry? What did my dinner not provide enough of? Did I not have enough protein? Did I not have enough fat? Did I not have enough fiber or like the vegetable, which would be providing the fiber. How can I change that for the next time I have that exact meal? How can I have more of the protein and fat that I was probably missing? So when I think about the choices I'm making today and the choices I will make tonight and the choice I will make as soon as I close this laptop, I'm always thinking, how do I want to feel today? And who do I want to be in four weeks? How do I want to feel in four weeks? I'm always thinking about how do I want to feel? This is what we are always unconsciously thinking about. But now I'm making it conscious for you. How do you want to feel? Well, guess what? There's a certain way to eat to make you feel that way. And there's a certain way to eat to make you not able to feel that way. You're just constantly chasing your cravings, chasing your hunger, not fully satisfied from your food. And you're like, why can't I get out of this cycle? Well, here's why. We have to change that mindset. We have to be conscious about it and get yourself to a different place where you can make these better decisions. At first, it's harder. At first, it's making that habit switch. So trying to switch off your unhealthy habits, the ones that are ingrained in you, ingrained in all of us that don't serve us anymore. So switching those off, stopping them, and instead adopting new healthy habits. So at first that switch is tough and it can be tough, but it gets easier and easier and easier over time. And on average, 
depending on the source that you're talking to or looking at, but in Atomic Habits, the awesome book by James Clear, there was a 2009 study published that he talked about. And that study found that on average, it takes 66 days to form a new habit. So for the next couple months, it's going to be like you're forcing yourself to get up and have that water every day. But guess what? In a couple months time, and probably even before that, it'll be literal habit. You will just get up and have your water. Here's my glass of water. It's just always going to be near you. And you will always be filling it up because that is now your new habit. That is just natural to you. And that makes you feel so good. So again, physiologically, because you're hydrating your body and mentally, because you're choosing to have this amazing habit of drinking more water. So it is so much easier to stick to because you're feeling so much better in all ways. So excuse me, I just have a sip of my amazing water that I keep talking about. Now I'm thirsty. So I kind of went through all the weeks just now, but I'm still in week one as far as my notes are concerned, but I like it because I want to, I mean, it's all connected. It's a holistic way of living and eating. And so I like that we're kind of going back and forth here, but I will go in order to make sure I don't miss anything that I wanted to say today. So the challenge I had for you in week one was to avoid sugar this week. So how are you doing with this? I want to know how you're doing with avoiding sugar. Are you planning on continuing with the no sugar? And by that, I mean, as far as the no sugar, I mean most refined sugar. So me, myself, I will still have honey, maple syrup. I still have stevia, like a more natural alternative sweetener, I should say. I will still have coconut sugar if I'm baking. I will bake with coconut sugar if I need that like granular sugar for a recipe. And that's pretty much it. And sometimes I'll eat foods that I know. Yeah, this probably had, it was probably made with sugar, but I'm at a restaurant and I'm not going to worry about it too much. Or I'm at someone's house and I'm not going to ask them what they put in this. You know, I'm not being that strict, but that's okay with me because I find that doing that still and allowing for those foods doesn't pull me towards sugar any more than not having them would do. So I feel okay with that. So I want to know, how are you going to continue this week as far as that challenge was concerned? Are you going to keep not eating sugar if you chose to stop? Are you like, it was fine, I have no difference, so I'm just going to go back to before? Or are you like, no, I'm I'm really going to really going to try with this. So I'm curious how that's going to go for you. So let me know. I also challenged you in day one to make your own salad dressing and eat it this week because I knew this means you're going to be avoiding a lot of those vegetable oils that are in the not so great salad dressings that you buy on the store shelf. Most of them contain vegetable oil of some kind. Usually it's soybean oil. Sometimes it's it just says vegetable oil on the label on the ingredient list. And that means a mix of any of the oils could be canola oil, even cottonseed oil is in certain packaged foods, like icing randomly. And it's just like, the more that we have of those bad oils, the worse it is for us. We want to avoid the high omega-6, high inflammatory, damaged fat containing oils, like you find in store-bought salad dressing. So this is why I encourage you to make your own. Not only are you avoiding those bad for you oils and having heart healthy olive oil instead, but you're also controlling the ingredients overall that are going in there. So you're not having the sugar that's often added. You're having real sea salt instead of the table salt that was probably used. And you're avoiding any preservatives or any extra flavors or anything that's added that is like, no, thanks. I don't want that extra chemical or that extra not great for me ingredient. Thank you very much. So that was my other challenge. So make salad dressing. This is for every single week. And it should last you in the fridge for a week, if not a little bit longer into your next week. And the final challenge I had for week one was to have that morning meeting with yourself and decide, how do I want to feel today? What am I going to do to get there? How do I want to feel when my head hits the pillow tonight? And what am I going to do to make that happen for myself? 
Now moving on to day two. Day two, we got into cravings and there are so many different facets to look at when it comes to cravings and avoiding them and reducing them in the first place. So, or reducing them, I should say, and avoiding them in the first place. The first thing is to activate your higher brain. There are two parts of our brain involved in decision-making. We have our, our higher brain. We can think of this as our angel voice, the voice that says, no, I don't think you should have the cake. I think you're best leaving it. Cause you know, when you're like deciding and you're like feeling indecisive, should I have the cake? Just like have it. Should I not have it? So the higher brains like, no, you're probably good. You you really aren't hungry. You're, you don't need it. You don't want the effects after. And you certainly don't want the cravings that are going to continue to come when you feed your craving. Cause that's what happens, right? You feed your craving with the sugar. Now, all you want is more and more sugar. And the more that you do that, the more sugar that your brain needs in order to feel the same way. So now it's like, you're just piling all the sugar and all the sources of sugar into your body. And oh my goodness, what a mess. So higher brain says, probably not a great idea. Whereas the primal brain, the other brain, the other part of our brain involved in decision-making is more like the rebel voice. He is saying, eat it. Of course you should eat it. I want to feel pleasure now. I want to feel good. It's going to taste delicious. You're at the party. Just do it. Who cares about after? So the primal brain is all about the here and now. How do I want to feel right now today? In this moment, I don't care about tomorrow. Higher brain says, let's think about the consequences, people. Let's think about the future. We don't want to feel crappy tomorrow and bloated. And we don't want to have all these cravings for the next week and then so on and so forth and having cravings forever. We want to get out of the cycle. So we have to activate that higher brain. How do we do that and, and make those better des- decisions more often? We activate it by making those better decisions. That is how we do it. We decide to listen to our higher brain. We say, you know what, higher brain, angel voice, you win. You win this argument. I'm not going to eat the cake. And it feels hard at first, but the more you make that decision, the more you make that choice, the easier it becomes because you're active, you're activating your higher brain. Your higher brain is being activated and you are literally creating new neural pathways in your brain that make it easier to make that same decision again and again. So at first, just like with habits, new habits, at first it's hard to activate that higher brain and it's hard to not listen to your primal brain, that rebel voice who just wants a cake right now. Why can't I have it? But it becomes easier over time. At first, you're like kind of forcing yourself not to have the cake, but then it becomes easier because the higher brain takes over and is more involved in decision making. And you're listening to that part of your brain more, which means you're creating these new neural pathways that your brain will then follow again and again, makes it easier to make these better choices again and again. That was just one facet of craving control. There are six, there are lots, but I have come up with six that I feel for me really helped me get past my cravings. Number two, eat enough of the right foods. Eat enough, hint, hint, and of the right foods, another hint. So we have to be eating enough of the right foods. We have to be eating the right foods, first of all. We need protein, we need fat, we need vegetable, fiber. So fiber comes from fruits, comes from vegetables, and it also comes from nuts and seeds, legumes like lentils and beans and peas. All of the plant-based foods, they have the fiber and the protein and fat typically come from our animal-based foods, typically, but also you'll get a lot of, you can get some plant-based protein, And you can certainly get plant-based oils like olive oil, flax oil, nuts and seeds providing good fats. So basically have a variety of real whole foods that will then provide you with the protein, the fat, the fiber slash vegetable. And the key is to eat enough of them. You don't just want to say, you know, I'm going to be I'm thinking about that ice cream that's in the freezer. It's a new flavor or it's my favorite flavor. It was on sale. So of course I got it from the store. So you're eating dinner, this healthy dinner, and you're thinking about the ice cream. That's all you're thinking about. 
So you're actually subconsciously not going to finish your dinner because you know you don't want to feel too stuffed because you want to save some room for, for dessert, right? Or you want to save some room for that evening snack. But that's... <laughs> That's the wrong way to go about it because now you will be hungry later because you haven't finished your dinner. So you have to eat the whole chicken breast without it making you stuffed. So we don't want to be stuffed. You want to be satisfied full enough that we will be satisfied all evening and all night, ideally, till the next morning. Again, if you're hungry, snack, but choose that healthier snack. The goal is not to feel hungry in between meals. That is the ultimate goal. That's when you know that each meal is nourishing enough. You're eating enough of the protein, of the fat, of the fiber. And by the way, we get into all of this stuff that I'm talking about in way more detail. And we spend time in each area in the Healthy Mama program. That is the six-week program. The doors are now open Today is the last day to sign up to get the bonus of a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me. So if you're like, this is a lot of information and I want more personalized advice, I want to know like, what about supplements that I should be taking? Or what about food specifically to my body and ways of eating for me? How about these symptoms that I'm personally experiencing and these goals that I have with my health and with my eating and with my body? How about those? A lot of those can be addressed and will be addressed in the course. So if you're taking the program, you already will get so far there. But if you have the one-on-one -on -one consultation on top of the program, it just takes you that much further and faster. You can kind of start to really feel better faster. So that bonus is expiring tonight at midnight. Today is Friday, September 1st. At midnight tonight, bonus gone course still available. And by the way, this is the first time that I'm ever offering this particular course. I'm so excited. As a side note, I'm so excited. I can't say it without saying that because I truly am. This is what I absolutely love to do. I feel so lucky that I get to do this as my job, as my work. I'm like, yes. So when you sign up, if you go to the checkout page, it's going to ask you for a coupon code. Put the code member, M-E-M-B-E-R, member, that will get you $500 off the course. It gives you 50% off the course because I'm offering it for the first time. So you will be the founding member of the course. So use that coupon code member. That code is not going to expire for this whole round. So while this course is available, while the doors are open, use the code member and get 50% off of, of the cost because I just want you in there. I just want you to start to experience how you can feel. I want you to start to truly feel motherhood and be able to like be in it to the fullest. I don't want you to be dragging. I don't want you to be dragging through your days feeling like, oh, I just, I know there's a better way. I know I'm not doing it, but oh, I'm just so tired. I can't even be bothered. I don't want you to go through your days lacking this energy and lacking this vitality that I know is so possible for you. You have this in you. I can help you to find it. I can help you to make that, to turn on that switch. So that's what I do. I help to guide you there. I give you the, here's the information. Here is my experience of getting there. And here's, here are the things that you can do to turn that switch on. I don't do it for you. It's you. And also, I may not be your person. There's a person for everybody. And I'm not everybody's person. And that is totally fine with me. If you're not into enthusiasm, I am not your person. But I want you to get the transformation that I know you can have. So find your person. Maybe you already have one. Maybe you already follow somebody and you're like, that's who I want to work with. Work with them. That's what I encourage you to do. But if I am your person, let's go. I am ready for you. I am ready for you inside this course. I want to help you. I want to guide you. I want to see the transformation that I know you can have. I just want you to feel better. It's about eating healthier and it's about living healthier so that you can transform, so that you can have this better experience of motherhood. You can literally 
enjoy life more because it's motherhood and it's your life. It's your, it's your day-to-day. How do you feel in your day-to-day? That is how you will live your life. That is how you will feel in your life. Our life is made up of days, right? Our days become weeks, become months, become a year, become five years. And before you know it, you're like, whoa, I've been living the same way for five years. No wonder I still feel the same. So I'm here at this as this little person to say, there's a different way. And I'm here to help you figure out what that different way is. And let me help, let me hold your hand during the time that we're together. And let me help you to stay there. Because, oh man, the roadblocks come and the doubting yourself comes and the cravings still are there. It's like, ah, so I'm here to help you get through that. I'm so excited. Again, I can't help but say that. So what I was talking about before I started talking about the course is you need to eat enough of the right foods. And the course will help to give you way more about what those right foods are. Number three for reducing and preventing cravings is to be willing to choose discomfort. We're not always going to be comfortable in life. And when it comes to sitting on the couch and eating chips, that's really comfortable in the moment. That feels so good. I know that. I know how good it feels. Believe me. But how does that feel tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day when I keep making that choice to feel comfortable in the moment feels freaking awful. Whereas if I choose to be a little bit uncomfortable right now, like I'm still sitting on the couch, I'm watching the show, that feels good, but I just want to have a little nibble. But if I choose not to have that little nibble, if I choose instead to say, I'm going to feel the discomfort of not eating those chips. And now oh, I'm going to feel the discomfort of whatever this mood is that I'm in that I didn't want to be in. Now I have to feel that mood. Oh, I have to like really pay attention to it and be present for it. So maybe it's some sadness. Maybe it's some anger, some frustration from the from the day. Now you have to sit with it. Oh, it does feel uncomfortable. Yeah, it feels uncomfortable to not eat the chips that you wanted to eat and to now have to feel this emotion that you were trying to get rid of, that you were trying to avoid feeling. But let me tell you, when you allow yourself to sit with that feeling, it will get better. It does dissipate. Might it come back? Sure. Will you be able to sit with it again? Yes. Will that also help it to dissipate and get less of a strong hold on you and just get weaker and weaker? Yes. So I want that for you. I want you to sit with your emotions and just feel them. Feel your feelings. Sit with the emotion. Just allow it to wash through you without eating to numb it. This is what we do. We choose food because it numbs our feelings and it makes us feel great in the moment. But then how do we feel as soon as that bag of chips is done? We feel empty because we haven't actually truly felt those emotions. We've just like squashed them down with food and we haven't filled our bodies. We haven't nourished ourselves. So we're still feeling physiologically empty like that food did nothing for me. My cells are still kind of hungry here. Our blood sugar level is up and down and up and down. Our mood up and down and up and down. It doesn't feel good. So if we choose a little bit of discomfort right now, it will be so comfortable later because we'll feel so proud. And physiologically, we're actually nourishing our bodies and nourishing our well-being. And that feels so much better than eating the chips right now could ever feel. I would also argue that it feels actually really uncomfortable four weeks from now when we kept making this choice today. I'm going to eat the chips. I'm going to eat the food. I'm going to numb the feelings. I'm going to numb, 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 numb. That is really uncomfortable four weeks from now when I keep making that same choice. Really uncomfortable. So we have to basically choose our discomfort. Because either way, it feels like crap. Either way, it feels like crap to not eat the chips when you just want the freaking chips. And it feels like crap four weeks from now when you kept eating the chips. Ah, feels bad physically and it be like physiologically, it feels bad. 
because you're just blah, bloated, blah. And mentally it feels bad because you kept making that same choice of eating the chips and you kept giving in. Why can't I just get control of it? So either way, it's uncomfortable. You have to choose your discomfort, basically. Maybe I should say it that way. So be willing to choose discomfort and literally just choose your discomfort. Is it discomfort in the moment now? Good idea, because long run, better. Or is it discomfort later on? Comfort in the now. Hmm. Not great. Number four way of getting rid of our cravings is to make the choice to do it. As in, make the choice to get up in the morning, have a healthy day. Get up in the morning, choose how you want to feel in that morning meeting, and go and do it. Go and have that water have that salad, have that smoothie, have the healthy snacks available, have the salad dressing in your fridge ready to go. You've got your meal plan. So you know what you're making for dinner. It's going to be healthy. It's going to feel really good eating it and preparing it because you're just feeding your body and your family's bodies so well. You've got to make the choice. You've got to make the choice to go for the walk. Even if it's more comfortable to stay home, make the choice and do it. Remember, follow your promises to yourself. Make good on your promises to yourself. Number five is to get moving. I know it doesn't feel like you don't feel like moving when all you want to do is sit down and eat cookies. Getting out there, getting outside and moving or standing up and doing a little workout does not feel at all fun in that moment. I know, but as soon as you do it, Oh my gosh, the endorphins start to come and the healthy, good neurotransmitters in your brain will start to secrete and you're going to feel so much better than the cookies could ever have made you feel. And you feel good in your future too. You're feeding your future when you're moving your body. You're feeding your future when you're feeding your body healthy foods. So just get moving. Doesn't have to take a long time. It can take 10 minutes. It can be a dance party alone or with your kids. It can be doing a Zumba class, which is what I used to teach for 10 years before I had Ellie. It can be yoga. It doesn't have to even be high intensity. It can be yoga. It can be weights. Go for that walk. Get outside with your kids. Do cartwheels on the grass. This is what I like to do too. Like get moving. Get your brain away from that pull that food has for us because it does. Food pulls us. The way that the foods are processed today are meant to make us addicted to them, are meant for us to not put the bag down. Bet you can't eat just one. Is that Lay's chips? I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Bet you can't eat just one. They literally know that you can't. So don't get yourself, first of all, don't get down on yourself for having these cravings. And for not being able to get out of this cycle, because that is how food is manufactured to do, to make you feel, to be. That is how food is manufactured to be. It is manufactured to make you sick. I mean, it does make you sick, but it's really made to make you addicted to it, to make you crave it, to make you want more, to spend more money, to keep spending money on this junk food. Here's the thing about money as well. How much money does it cost to eat healthy, Laura? Well, how much money does it cost you to eat unhealthily? How much money does it cost to buy Doritos these days? $4, I think, for a bag. How long will that last you? One night? How long will it last you nutritionally? Not very long. It's not going to last you at all as far as satisfaction when it comes to nourishing your body. So you're going to have to buy more of the junk food. The junk food actually costs a lot of money. And it costs you your health. So there is that side of it. But I'm actually just talking about the cost right now. The money cost costs a lot of money. We also can talk about the course cost. And we can talk about spending money on your health and ultimately on yourself. It's like you have to believe that you can make a change for yourself. You have to be able to say, you know what? I'm going to put myself first. I know I can make this change. And putting money in the game helps you to do that better. When you've got skin in the game, you're like a lot more likely to stick with it. 
to really make the changes because you've put out your hard-earned money. You've put out these dollars and it's like, I better stick to it now. I better make changes. And I know that you can, and you know that you can. I also want you to think about if you shop at Costco, like I shop at Costco, for example, there is not a time and we don't get tons of stuff. I always look at my cart like, how? How is it possible that that is what I'm paying today? We do not leave Costco with less than a $400 bill. I know. And if you go to Costco, you probably agree. You would probably say, yeah, same. We don't go very often. So yeah, we're stocking up when we're there. But like, I'm saying like, it's easy. It's easy just to get rid of that 400 bucks. Where to go? I know, it's just gone. So when you're thinking about spending $500 on a course, because that's how much it is, half price is 500 bucks. The normal price is 997. I want you to think about how far it can take you. I want you to know that you are spending money on yourself and you're betting on yourself. You're like, I know that I have this in me to make a change in my health. And here is how I can get there. This course or the person you cho choose to go with, they will help me to see certain things and they'll point me in the, in the right direction so that I can start to make these changes for my health. And for my well-being, for my body, for my life, so that I can ultimately thrive in this thing called motherhood. So I want you to think of it that way. It's like you can easily spend 400 bucks or 500 bucks at Costco. Or if you get coffee every day, if you go to Starbucks, you know that's going to be adding up really quickly. But even Tim Hortons, I mean, it adds up. And what is it really giving you? Okay, if you're having your coffee and you're enjoying it, that's good because that's helping with your well-being. But there are so many things that are mindless that we are just paying for. Things for the house. How many pillows have you bought? You're like, oh, leaving Marshalls or leaving HomeSense. Like $350 later, it's like, what do you have to show for it? You're buying things because you want to make your house feel. You want to make yourself feel a certain way because your house feels cozy or it looks aesthetically pleasing because, and that's going to make you feel better. So when you spend money on a course or money on food, that's going to help you to change your nutrition status, help you to enhance your vitality and well-being. Like that is a lasting change. You can see where your money has gone there. You can feel, oh my gosh, I feel so much lighter. I feel so much better. I know that I am spending money on myself in such a healthy way. When I could be spending it mindlessly here, I'm being very mindful and really, really helping myself. Okay, the last part of cravings here. Truly realize and understand that sugar does not make you happy. That is the bottom line when it comes to sugar cravings. It actually doesn't make us happy. It really doesn't. We think it does because it does in the moment. It makes us have this dopamine hit, this like, whew, this like rush of dopamine. It feels so good in the moment. And that's what we think we're after. But you know what? It does not last. And then you need more and more and more of the same substance, the same sugar. You need more and more and more of it to feel that same rush. So now you're just looking for more Doritos and more mini eggs and more ice cream and just you're piling it all on. I want the salty, then I want the sweet and all these like tastes and mouthfeels that they manufacture for us to make us addicted. It's just all coming at us all the time. We think it makes us feel better, but it doesn't. It actually makes us feel like crap. Physiologically, it makes us feel ugh because now we're bloated and gassy and craving more of the same and full low energy, mood swings. So physiologically, it's making us feel crapola. Mentally and emotionally, that's where the mood swings come in. This is where it feels like, oh, I just feel so like down because I can't just seem to get out of the cycle. What's going on? Well, yes, like the food manufacturing business, they have you. That is where they want you. You have the power to get out of it. You have the power to choose what foods you're going to eat today. 
You have the power to choose how you're going to live your life today. You have to own that power. You've got it. Like you already, I don't have to give it to you. You already have it inside you. You can choose to go have a sip of water. You can go choose to go make a salad for dinner or to have it with your dinner. You're going to have some chicken breast or some chicken, I mean, or some steak or some salmon with dinner. That is your choice. You always have the choice. So don't ever think that you are just like stuck and you can't. I will say when you have sugar addiction and sugar cravings, it feels that way. I know I've been there. I get it. It feels like you're stuck and you can never get out of it because you were doing really well and then something happened and now you're just sitting on the couch again with the same freaking bag of chocolates that you're that you're trying to avoid. Can you feel me? Because I know what it's like. Like you can feel that I get it because the examples I give are like specific examples from my own life that I can remember. And I remember how that felt. And I was like, ah, I finally decided. I went through all these things that I talk about, right? These are all, by the way, from my own experience. So from my knowledge and training and research as a holistic nutritionist, combined with the fact that I was a sugar holic for basically my entire life, my experience of that, that combines together to give you what I give you in the information, in the talks and the chats that I give you in the things I post on Instagram. It all comes as a combination of all these things that I have and you can, I want you to know that you can get out of that cycle. I just decided one day, a long time ago, I, I'm like, okay, I actually realized that sugar is not making me happy. And then I was able to, to finally let it go. It almost was like easy when I finally made that choice. I had all these other factors at play, like making sure that my blood sugar was keeping steady, making sure I was having the right foods and my meals were satisfying enough. I was, I was eating enough of the right foods, choosing discomfort, choosing to feel it in the moment. But then when I actually made that decision and I was like, I'm not having sugar again, and it actually doesn't make me happy. And when I truly started to embody that, and in my brain, I was like, I know this is true. When I knew that was my truth, sugar is actually not making me happy. It's making me feel stuck. It's making me feel like I can't get out of the cycle. That doesn't feel good. So when I truly took that on, I realized I can do this. Let's go. And I did it. And I haven't looked back. So that is what I teach you now when it comes to sugar cravings, but there's so much more involved in healthy eating. But I just find that I I spend a lot of time here in the cravings aspect because that is huge. I can give you all the healthy eating guidance in the world, but if your body is going to go back and and your mind is going to go back and say, actually, I still am addicted to the sugar, it's not going to go very far. That is why I spend a lot of time in sugar cravings and why one of these days of the challenge was just dedicated specifically to that. Now, my challenge for you that day was to continue not having sugar because that's what I challenged you on day one. Day two was like, let's keep this going. Let's continue to not have sugar this whole week and more if you can. Now, day three we went more into what makes a healthy dinner. We went more into like building a meal. So we talked about protein, how your protein was about half of your plate. And then, sorry, your vegetables. I started talking about protein and then I went to what I normally say first. Your vegetables are about half to three quarters of your plate. So picture that, picture your dinner plate right now. Your vegetables, so whether that's your salad or whether that's your vegetable, your side vegetable, or combination of both, that will take up half to three quarters of your plate. Let's say three quarters to start with. So you can picture this. Now picture the remaining quarter of your plate is your protein. Here's your chicken breast, here's your piece of pork chop, your salmon, whatever. That is your plate. Now healthy fats, where do those come in? Those are sprinkled through. Those are added in in the form of your salad dressing that you make yourself. They are added in the form of butter that you're adding to your broccoli, which makes it so much more delicious and healthier for you, by the way. So healthy fats are added throughout. Now, when would you have 
only half of your plate being vegetables would be if you're having a starch like rice, for example. So if you're having quinoa or some brown rice with your dinner, now your vegetables are, will shrink to about half of your plate, quarter being the starch, and then the quarter still being protein. So we talked about uh, how important it is to make sure we're eating enough of the protein, enough of the fat, and how do we actually make this happen in our life? Because that is also key. It's like, okay, I can know what to eat. How do I implement it? I'm very busy. So what I said to you there was, what I'm suggesting is to make a very simple meal plan. Monday to Friday, just dinners. And it's a very loose and flexible plan, meaning that you can have, you can decide, okay, so for Monday, we're going to have actually leftovers. We have leftover chili from today. Today's Sunday, let's say, for example. So on Monday, tomorrow night, we're going to have leftover chili. Perfect. And then on Tuesday, oh, we've got salmon in the freezer. Okay. Salmon, broccoli, and rice. Okay. Wednesday, we're going to have leftover salmon and so on and so forth. Now, you've got that plan. It's very simple. You are making a grocery list as you're going through your plan. Oh, broccoli, do we have it in the fridge? No. Okay, that's going to be written on the grocery list. And then once you've compiled your grocery list based on your plan for dinners and anything else that you might need for snacks for the kids or, you know, breakfast or lunch, anything, it's all on the grocery list. And ideally, you're only going shopping that one time. If you have to go and if you like going grocery shopping more than that, feel free. But the idea is that you don't have to. You've got it all in that one little place. From there, let's say your husband comes home and he says, okay, tonight we're having steak. Let's have a barbecue. Let's, let, I brought home steak. And you're like, oh, shoot, it's Tuesday. I have planned salmon and broccoli for today. That's okay. I want that to be okay for you. So you would say, all right, we're just going to scratch that out. We're having steak tonight. So where can I put the salmon? Maybe on Wednesday, because Wednesday we had planned to have salmon leftovers. Well, maybe we'll just make the salmon for Wednesday and so on and so forth. So that's what I mean by your meal plan being very flexible and loose. The idea is that if those things don't come up, if your husband doesn't come home with steak for dinner, then you know you're having salmon. If you and your husband like to be more spontaneous and say, what should we have for dinner tonight? Feel free. You can cheat on your meal plan, if you will. You can say, you know what? Yes, let's just have that because you chose that and I like the idea. Let's do it. That's fine and acceptable and awesome. But the key is that you had the plan to begin with so that if you don't have that spontaneous conversation, what are we going to have for dinner tonight? What are we going to make? You already have a plan. You have that thing to fall back on because the key here is that it's another decision that you have to make. What's for dinner tonight? It's another choice. It's like, oh, I'm overwhelmed with choices, with decisions throughout the day. I don't want another one. Thank you very much. So have the plan allow it to be flexible. And that was our challenge for that day. So day three challenge was make that weeknight plan. So we had that on Wednesday. So make your plan for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday night. What are you going to have for dinner? What are you going to make for dinner? And also include leftovers, as I said in my example, because leftovers are awesome. And they absolutely are a part of a healthy eating plan and should be. Moving on to day four, that was yesterday. Yesterday, we talked about how this time in our lives as moms of littles is, in my opinion, basically like one of the most important times in our life to be healthy right now. Because not only are our kids watching how we feed our bodies as they get older, and I think that's a really key thing, how we have a healthy relationship with food. We don't necessarily talk about our weight with it or any of that, not even really getting there today. My point is they see us feeding our body healthy foods. They see that we reach for the apple. They see that we are eating when we're hungry. They see that we're eating our meal. We're not just skipping out on it. We, we sit down with them and we enjoy that food. We're mindful about it. We're not just 
watching TV while we're eating. It's like we turn it off for dinner. We're sitting, we're talking. We're This is a key part of our day is nourishing our bodies. So that's number one. But the other part of it, why I think now is the most important time of our lives, mamas, to be healthy is because I want you to be able to enjoy this time to the fullest. When you are nourished properly, when your cells are properly nourished, you feel so much better. You've got mental clarity. You've got this physical and mental energy. You've got a steady, balanced blood sugar, which means steady energy throughout all of the day. Your brain is less cluttered. You are less likely and less prone to like feeling super stressed and overwhelmed. You can just enjoy it better. And that is what I want for you. You can enjoy motherhood better. You can be in thriving mode rather than surviving mode. I don't want you just to survive through these days and these years. I want you to thrive, thriving in motherhood. That is what it's all about. And you can, absolutely you can. And I know that is true for you. And I know that you know it's true. Like inside you, you know that you can thrive. You might not know how to get there. That's where I come in. This is where I can help you with that. I can guide you with that. But ultimately it's you that implements and you that does it. I do handhold, but I don't do it for you. I can teach you the ways, but I can't do them for you. That's where you come in and say, this is how I want to feel. These are the things that I'm going to do. And I'm going to stick to it. And I'm going to make those promises, not to Laura, but to myself. And I'm going to stick to those promises because this is how I want to feel. And those things will get me there. And I know that's true because I've experienced it already. And I'm going to keep doing those things. And do we slide and do we slip and do we have like real life in there? Yes. Although this is real life, by the way, it's not just like just some dream. Like you can't always feel good. But so even though like, yeah, there are days when you're still going to feel overwhelmed and you're still just going to, oh, we're human. But overall, when you've got that foundation of health, you are unstoppable. You just feel so good mentally, physically, emotionally. And I want that for you. So as we wrap up this challenge, it has first of all been so fun. And I'm so going to do this more often because I know I love teaching. I've always loved it. I'm just going to keep doing it more and more. So I'm, I'm so happy that you signed up for this challenge. I really thank you. And as I, as I started by saying this week, at the beginning of the week, like you should be thanking yourself for choosing health, for choosing you, for putting yourself first, for saying, I want to get healthier. Let's do this challenge. Let's see what she has to say. Let's implement some things. Let's do it. So thank you to you from you. And it's just been so cool to go through all these different facets and to hopefully open your eyes to all the different ways that you can get healthy. It's not just about the food. I started by saying that at the beginning of the week. It's not just about the food. It's about your mindset. It's about the how you treat your body on a daily basis. It's about the motivation, how that's what we talked about a lot yesterday. So like, this is the most important time of your life to be happy. Okay, so how do we keep up with the motivation? Like, oh, what a huge thing. What a huge conversation in itself. So it's not just about here are the foods, go eat them. Because that doesn't always work because we're human, because we have brains, because we have emotions that try to steer us in every which way and in all directions. So yes, here are the foods to eat and then here are the ones to avoid. But like, here's how to eat these foods, first of all. And here's how to avoid those foods. Here's actually how to do it. Here's how to stay more on this side and less on that side. Here's how to live this holistic motherhood life where you can actually feel really good. You can actually start to enjoy your time playing with your kids because you're feeling ah, nourished, because you're feeling rested, because you're giving that to your body. So we talk about all of this and more in The Healthy Mama. That is why I called the course The Healthy Mama. 
because you're going to be healthy in so many, there's so many different ways that you can be healthy and that you already are healthy and that you will continue to become healthier in. It's so much fun. And I can't wait to go through it with you. So the doors are now open to the healthy mama. Again, use the code member at checkout. And if you sign up by this, by tonight, by Friday, September 1st at midnight, you will get the one-on-one consultation included in the price of the course. But regardless, the doors will stay open after tonight. And you will always get, for this round, you will always get the 50% off. So use that code member so that you can get that deal and can get that price because you are the founding members and I'm so excited. We begin on Monday, September 11th and it's going to be two Zoom calls per week that will then be uploaded into the course portal. So if you go to the course portal now, you will see the week one workbook, but there's no video yet in week one because we're going to be doing it live. And then that live video will be added to the course portal. And there's two videos, two Zoom calls per week. Now, if you get the one-on-one consultation bonus, so if you sign up by tonight at midnight, I will send you an email after you sign up. And I will, in that email, we will figure out a time. We will book a time for your one-on-one. But yeah, we start September 1st. And every week, two live Zoom calls and a workbook to go with each call and support. The Facebook group for the mem- for members only is already open. So you can go to the Facebook group and start connecting with other mamas who are in the same boat, who know that there is a way to feel better. They want to feel better. And now they're just excited to get there. And they're excited to get to know one another in this container. And it's like a collective of like-minded mamas. So that Facebook group is already open. It's available to go sign up for, to to go and join for members only. And oh my goodness, I'm just excited. So if you have questions, do let me know. The link to the course page where you can sign up for the course and you can read a little bit more about it is, okay, this is random, I know. I've had such an issue trying to get the link to this page. Oh my gosh, I'm like, are you serious? There is going to be a new link, which is going to be course.newmamanation.com. So if you're listening to this podcast episode, which it will become soon today, or if you are watching the replay video and you go to course.newmamanation.com, it may not work yet because I'm having an issue with that link, but I'm going to put it out there anyway, because you can try it. It's just easier to get there. If it doesn't work, go to my Instagram. Link in bio, you will see the first option when you click the link in my bio. And by the way, my Instagram is at Laura and Lima. Click the link in my bio. The very first button there, the first one that you can click is called the Healthy Mama course. Click there. That will take you to the course page. Oh my gosh, what a turn, what a workaround. But anyway, Instagram, I will always have the the updated link. So I thought at least there's one place that I can send you to that it will always be accurate. Oh my goodness. All right. So if you have questions about the course, about this amazing challenge that I've had so much fun with this week, you can put your questions in the Facebook group and you can send me an email, laura at newmamination.com. Well, my friends, it has been so fun. Thank you, thank you, thank you for taking the time to follow along in whatever way that you followed along. And again, it is never too late. You are not too late. If you have not watched any replays and you're just listening to this one or watching this one for the first time today, that's okay. If the challenge was last week, it's now Tuesday, you're like, ah, shoot. Yes, we are still here. Like just take it from today. There's no rush. We are good. And we are starting the six-week program, the Healthy Mama online course starts on Monday, September 11th. So we have a little bit of time there and I'm just so excited to keep going. So you have an amazing day, Mama. Ask me the questions you have and I will talk to you so soon. Bye.